This is the ultimate beginner tutorial for Scratch. If you are a complete beginner and don't know where to start, you're in the right place. Now to start Scratch, we need to go to scratch.mit.edu. This will take you to the Scratch website. Here you can sign in with an already existing account. Or if you don't have an account, you can just create one by clicking join scratch. I already have an account so I've signed in right now. If you've just created an account, make sure to accept the email sent by scratch regarding your account. By doing that, you will have access to various things in scratch. Now we can create our first scratch project. In the top part of the website, click on create. This creates a blank project for us. Here is a brief overview of the scratch editor. We have three tabs called code where we use blocks to make our project. Then we have costumes which have various images for a sprite. And then we have sounds which control the sounds of the sprite. Sprites are like objects of a project. The top right corner is our stage. This is basically the outcome of all the code of our project. Scratch Cat is the default sprite in Scratch. All the projects run by clicking the green flag. However, nothing is happening whenever we are clicking the green flag. So let's actually start coding. In the code tab, we have many categories of blocks. However, all the projects in Scratch need to start with the when green flag clicked block, which you can get from the events category. And then we can go to motion and take move 10 steps. And as you can see, whenever we click the green flag, the cat indeed moves 10 steps or 10 pixels across the stage. Now let's make it so that we can control the cat using the arrow key. So let's remove this move 10 steps block and then go to control, take a forever loop then take an if then block then go to sensing then attach this block right over here inside the if block and then we can check if key. I'm going to put right arrow. So if the right arrow key is pressed, go to motion then let's change x by something like 5. This basically moves the cat 5 pixels to the right. For the left arrow, we can go to control then take an if block and put it right below this if block and then go to sensing and we can check if the left arrow key is pressed and then we can change x by minus 5 which makes the cat move 5 pixels to the left when you click the green flag we can move our cat right and left using the right and left arrow keys now to move up and down we can do the same thing but for up and down arrows go to control and check if go to sensing up arrow key is pressed then go to motion this time change y by 5 which makes it move up 5 pixels and then for the down arrow we can check if down arrow key is pressed go to motion and change y by minus 5 which makes it move down 5 pixels so as you can see we can move our cat in all directions x is the horizontal position of the cat and y is the vertical position of the cat make sure to remember that and this was your first script of code in the beginning we can center the cat using the go to x y block in the motion tab so make sure to drag that and attach it between the when green flag click and the forever loop like this and then we'll go to x 0 y 0 and as you can see in the beginning it is centered we can even change the name of the sprite to something like cat and we can even change the background if we go over here we have many options we can even choose a background in the scratch library and as you can see we have many backgrounds here we can even create our own background by clicking the stage option then going to the backdrops tab then i'm going to choose the square tool i'm going to set the color to something like this then I'm going to draw a square that covers the entire canvas and as you can see we have a blue background here. Now as you can see only the cat is moving in this project. Let's add something which the cat can collect like apples. You can get sprites as well from the scratch library by choosing a sprite here and then clicking on apple. And as you can see we got an apple here. It's a bit big so I'll do when green flag click and I'll go to looks and then I'm going to set the size to something like 75%. This basically decreases the size as you can see and I want it to be placed in a random position in the stage so we can simply go to motion and then go to random position as you can see whenever we click the green flag the apple is in a random position now let's make it so that we can actually collect the apple so in the apple sprite go to events let's take another when green flag click block then in control let's take a forever loop then we'll check if touching and then click on this arrow button here and then choose cat so if we are touching the cat we want the apple to go to another position so we'll do go to random position now as you can see whenever we touch the apple the apple goes to another position on the stage now this is a nice base for our game let's make the game more fun by adding a scoring system this time we're going to be using variable so go to the variables tab here then click on make a variable and then let's call this score and then click ok a variable basically stores data in this case we'll use a variable to store the score of the player each time the player touches the apple the score should increase by one so under this when green flag click block we'll drag this set my variable block right below 
below the when green flag clicked block like this and then we're going to change it to score so we want the score to be zero whenever we start the game then after touching the cat let's change the score by one so we basically use the change score by one block now as you can see the score is displayed like this but we can make it more readable by right clicking it then choosing large readout then i can move it and center it somewhere here and now if we go to full screen we can see the score is increasing i start out with zero apples but when i collect one the score becomes one when i collect another one it becomes two then three then four and so on now let's take the game to the next level we'll add a timer and the player can catch as many apples as they can within that time so let's create a new variable called timer and this variable based basically stores the amount of time remaining this time we're going to go to the backdrops and do the code here as the timer is for the full game and not for a specific sprite so we'll do when green flag click go to variables drag this set my variable block then we're going to set the timer to something like 30 which means we want 30 seconds of time and then let's take a forever loop wait one second and then go to variables take the change my variable block and under this wait one second we're going to change timer by minus one so every second the timer decreases by one i'm going to put the timer variable somewhere here the timer works it gives a countdown now the timer should stop when it is zero so now we're going to use the if condition so go to control then put this if condition around the wait one second and change timer by minus one block and then go to operators take the greater than block then go to variables then take this timer block and we're going to check if it is greater than zero basically if the value of timer is greater than zero then we want to do the countdown otherwise it won't do the countdown as you can see the timer stops when it reaches zero which is exactly what we want however we can still play the game once the timer reaches zero so let's fix that so when the timer reaches zero we want the game to completely stop so what we can do is instead of using this if block we can go to control and then take an if then else block right over here and then drag this if timer is greater than zero and attach it right over here and then we're going to wait one second and change timer by minus one if the timer is greater than zero and then else if the timer is zero you can simply drag the stop all block which is in control and then remove this if then block and then drag this if timer is greater than zero block and put it inside the forever loop whatever is inside the else happens if this condition is not met so if the timer is not greater than zero the game will stop if the timer is greater than zero then it will wait one second and change timer by minus one and as you can see the game completely stops and the timer reaches zero like we can't move the cat we can even add sounds to our game by going to the sounds tab and then choosing a sound like this and as you can see you have various options right over here but if we go back we can see that scratch already has a chomp sound in the apple sprite so let's go back to the code and then whenever we are touching the cat let's just start sound chomp And that was the game. Here is some gameplay. So I go to full screen mode. Then I click the green flag. We have a nice timer here. And we should collect as many apples as we can in 30 seconds. And apples done. done and I collected 24 apples in 30 seconds now if you have any questions related to the code of this game feel free to ask in the comments down below you can further improve the game by adding cool designs a better number counter and more things to collect and to improve your scratch skills further you can see tutorials in youtube especially my channel on how to make scratch projects and that's the end of this video if it was helpful make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more thanks for watching Now if you want to share your scratch project to the public, go to see project page, then add a title and then add instructions and then if you want you can even add a thumbnail and then you can basically share the project by clicking this button and then proceed with share and your project is shared.